Hi everyone, it's Katie from Live Green in Plano here at my neighborhood pond. Today I'm bringing you a fun and interesting lesson called Enviroscape. It uses a model city to show you how your actions at home, at school, or at work can impact our drinking water supply. So let's learn about the good behaviors and the bad behaviors that can either protect or harm our drinking water supply. Ready to dive right in? Before we dive right into those behaviors though, it's really important to know what a storm drain is. Storm drains have a very important job, and that is to keep us safe when it rains. They convey water away from our streets and into the nearest body of water, which in Plano is usually a creek or a stream. Here's what a storm drain looks like. You might see these in your neighborhood, near your school, or even in a park after a soccer game. They may look a little bit different, but they all have the same important job. However, there's a problem. Sometimes when water travels quickly as it rains, it carries anything in its path into a storm drain, even if it's something that we don't want to enter our natural bodies of water. Can you think of any problems with that? When pollutants enter storm drains and then our natural bodies of water, they impact the habitat or the home of aquatic life, including this family of ducks in the pond in my neighborhood, but also fish, frogs, insects, other birds, and so many more. Let's protect our natural bodies of water and the home or habitat of these special creatures. Now that we know what storm drains are, we can take a closer look at our model city. We've got a neighborhood with homes and cars. We've got roadways, a factory, even some agricultural or farming land. There are creeks and streams and a small lake with boats on it. There's also something a little unusual on the model city. Can you spot what it is? That's right, it's a dinosaur. I don't know about you, but I haven't seen one of those in the city of Plano. The dinosaur is on the model city to remind you that water is very, very old. In fact, the water that you used to brush your teeth this morning could be the same water that this dinosaur stomped through millions and millions of years ago. Pretty cool, huh? While we're not getting any new water on planet Earth, modern technology allows us to clean the water over and over again. It's pretty amazing. But we have a limited supply of fresh water, especially here in North Texas. So it's our job to be good stewards of our precious resource. The Enviroscape lesson demonstrates what happens when people make poor decisions. So we're going to actually pollute our model city and see what happens to our drinking water supply with some pretend pollutants. I've taken some everyday items, nothing dangerous, to pretend like they're things that might harm our environment when they enter a storm drain and our natural bodies of water. My pretend pollutants include shredded paper to simulate litter, soapy bubbles to simulate washing your car, purple food coloring to simulate oil, green food coloring to simulate fertilizers and pesticides, parsley to simulate grass clippings and other yard waste, and finally, coffee to simulate pet waste. Litter is trash or recycling that's out of place. In our model city, there's a lot of litter because people make poor decisions. It's important to always pick up litter as long as it's safe to do so. It's also important to be mindful of our own waste to make sure that it doesn't go out of place. In this city, unfortunately, we have litter all over the place. In our neighborhood, along our roadways, near our farm, and even near places of business. When people wash their cars at home in the driveway, those soapy bubbles run down the driveway, down the street, into a storm drain, and then directly into our natural bodies of water. 
If you were a fish or a frog, having soap in your eyes would be so painful. I don't think soapy bubbles are healthy for aquatic creatures, so it's important that they don't enter a storm drain. The alternative to washing your car at home is to go to a car wash, where they have specialized filters that keep pollutants from entering our storm drains. Boy, we sure have some clean cars. But do you think that fish and other aquatic life want soapy bubbles in their home? Do you think that's healthy? I don't think so. Let's face it, cars don't stay new forever. Sometimes they get leaky and they need a little help. Also, chemicals at home should be stored appropriately so that they're not a danger to children or also in danger of leaking into places where they shouldn't. Oil, whether it comes from a leaky car or from improperly stored chemicals, can be a detriment to our watershed. These may be some clean cars, but they are leaking some oil. Fertilizers should be used sparingly according to the directions and at the right time. In our model city, people just dump that fertilizer in the yard without respect for the directions or the appropriate quantity to use, and they did it right before heavy rain, which is a big no-no. Most of that fertilizer will be washed off the yard to begin with, and it will never even help nourish the landscape. Grass clippings, leaves, and other yard waste should be bagged in paper bags or mulched and left on the lawn. They should never be swept or blown into the street or even into a storm drain. When this happens and they go into the storm drain, they then enter our natural bodies of water. All of that organic or natural material might be seen as fertilizer or good but actually, it can tremendously harm our aquatic wildlife. In fact, when it enters the waterways, it sucks up all the oxygen so that our aquatic life have none left to breathe. Here we have grass clippings all over the streets in our neighborhood. Pet waste is smelly and gross. Have you ever stepped in it? I sure hope not. People in our model city are stepping in it left and right because they never pick up pet waste. That's a poor decision. It's very important to pick up pet waste because as you'll learn, it is a powerful pollutant that contains potent pathogens or disease-causing organisms. So put that bag on your hand, pick up the pet waste, and trash it. Or do the right thing. So in our city, People never pick up after their pup or do the right thing, as they say. So we have poop all over the place. We have made quite a mess of this model city with pollutants everywhere because of people's irresponsible actions. I don't know if that's a city that I would want to live in. Or if I were an animal, I don't think it would be very healthy for me. Oh, I hear the rumble of thunder in the distance. Let's see what happens to these pollutants when it rains. Do they stay in the same place or do they move? Now that the storm has passed, we can truly see the impact of all of these pollutants 
on our drinking water quality. The pollutants move from higher elevation to lower elevation through our creeks and streams where they eventually made their way into our lake. Is that a lake that you would like to swim in? If you were a fish or a frog, is that a lake that you'd like to live in? I don't think so. We've just shown that what happens in the watershed can impact more than just us and our neighborhoods. It can impact the place where our drinking water comes from. All of these pollutants make it very challenging for the water to be cleaned and treated in order to be available for drinking again. I've made a pretty big mess of this model in Viruscape City today, but it can be cleaned up pretty easily. We only have one city of Plano, so it's important to keep it green and keep it clean. Remember to always pick up litter, to use the car wash to wash your car, to fix leaky vehicles and store chemicals appropriately, to apply fertilizer sparingly and appropriately, to bag or mulch grass clippings and other yard waste, and to pick up pet waste. In doing so, you'll help protect our drinking water quality and keep it clean and healthy. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope you learned a lot and I hope you stay well and have a great day. Bye.